Here's something I never thought I'd be talking about. Uh, no more valedictorian. Not that I was even remotely <laughs> close to any consideration for that. But there's a school in Ohio that has eliminated the valedictorian mm -hmm. uh, and salutorian uh, because they feel that the kids are feeling too much pressure. And they're eliminating that to improve overall mental health. So we want to know, what do you think? Again, this is an Ohio issue, mm -hmm. but hey, it could spread. That's why we're talking about it. Do you think uh, this is a good thing? ABC10.com slash vote. And the district was saying this because they had no cap on GPA. So it was like an arms race. They spent all their summers, all their waking hours yeah. trying to get more classes and boost up their GPA. Yeah. They want to put an end to that. What are people saying? Yeah, Colin? Dave says, why don't we just give people scholarships top 10? We could do that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Tony says, the school's supposed to teach kids how to compete in the real world. So. so keep it. Yeah, yeah, some people say it. But love to hear what you have to say, uh, as always. Okay, let's get to all our local national news. We call it Daily Blend. We do it within five minutes. What are we talking about today? You just heard uh, Brittany mention that. The Amgen Tour getting ready to kick off another round this morning. Uh, the first stop yesterday was in downtown Sacramento. Perfect weather. But in a few hours, stage two will start in Rancho Cordova at 930, which is a first for our friends in Rancho Cordova. It's going to end at Heavenly Mountain in South Lake Tahoe while riding through places like scenic downtown Placerville. Carlos Herrera is meeting up with local kids who are getting some inspiration from the race from a famous rider. But first, Brittany has an update on the roads, cancellations, and how it's all going to play out today. Brett? Yeah, we have your back. Talk about pride. All right, so we are all things Rancho Cordova. If you're in this area, it's the first time hosting Amgen. We want you to wear blue and gold. All right, Ashley, I know you're so proud. One traffic alert folks need to know about so they can get to work on time. Sure. So primarily on White Rock Road from yeah. Prospect Park Drive all the way out to our eastern city limit, including Sunrise Boulevard, will be closed from 910 till about 945 this morning. Perfect. So plan ahead, use alternate routes. They're available at cityofranchocordova.org slash Amgen. I love it. Okay, so let's give you all those traffic alerts so you can have a little fun and still get to work on time. Bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. Prospect Park Drive is already shut down between White Rock Road and Gold Center Drive. You're also going to see rolling road closures kicking off in the area at 9. The race is expected to cross Sunrise Boulevard, around 920 and that can mean really big delays if you take this intersection to work. The race is expected to leave Rancho Cordova on White Rock Road around 945. So how in the world do you avoid these delays? You'll want to make sure to leave early. You can take International Drive or Ziffendale Drive and of course we'll update you with our ABC 10 Wazers. I'm Carlos Herrera, a former national cycling champion is inspiring youth to dream high. In just a few hours, they'll meet here right at the start line at Amgen Stage 2. Again, to inspire them to follow their dreams and reach their goals. All of this after meeting former national champion and former sprint specialist Freddy Rodriguez. He grew up in a very challenged neighborhood in East Los Angeles. He now lives in the Bay Area. He spoke to students at Washington Carver High School. He shares some tips about how to overcome their challenges. And students say meeting Rodriguez was simply life changing. Seeing people like that who, who are, are so motivated and, and love what they do and just want to like express it with other people is, is something that I want to do and I, I, I want to be like that. It says that he doesn't want to become a pro athlete, but experiences like this motivate him to do his best in everything. Rodriguez, who we spoke with on Friday, says he sees an increase in growth. Uh, and um, in uh, just people wanting to continue growing in cycling here in Northern California. He hoped to see some of those youth he met on Friday to participate in Amgen. We'll send it back over to you guys. All right, Carlos, thanks for that. Uh, let me tell you something. I am out here in the Gilmore backyard and it is dry. It's gonna be a nice day today, but I think by this time on Thursday morning, I'm gonna be standing out here in the rain because we've got some legit storms on the way. So let's get right to it. First of all, it's a Monday and we don't want all these changes to happen today. We're just trying to get into our work week and into our school week. So today's gonna be how the weekend went. Temperatures in the 50s, like what we have right now. Up high, we're in the 30s. Hour by hour, we move into the 60s. By noon, we're in the 70s. And then later on this afternoon, we're gonna hit the low 80s. The reason why is because we have the same pattern. High pressure right on top of us. But once that moves, which it will by tomorrow, 
Look at all those clouds. They're coming to your neighborhood. And then behind those clouds, we've got big major changes, including rain, including snow in the mountains, and including thunderstorms as well. So if you live in the foothills, you're mostly looking at 70s. But if, uh, for Tahoe, we're going to move from the 60s to the 40s for highs by Thursday. In the Bay Area, another nice day today. San Francisco 64, 80 for Fairfield. Once you get a little bit inland, we hit solid low 80s later on this afternoon. Tomorrow, we only hit the 70s because we have clouds rolling in. And then by Wednesday night, that's when we see the rain, the snow, and the thunderstorms move on in. So we've got major changes on the way. How's it look early this morning for uh, traffic, Carly? Uh -uh. Carly's still working on that. We're working on big major changes. Hey, listen, were you stuck on Highway 50 like me yesterday? What was going on? I'm like, why? I got some place to go. Well, a suspect is in custody. That's why there was a suspect. And Highway 50 is back open after a police chase turned uh, officers making them shut down Highway 50 yesterday. Here's what police say happened. And there's where I was. Just before 1.30 yesterday afternoon, along Highway 80, they responded to a call about a man with a gun. When they arrived, the suspect took off. They chased him to Highway 50. He hit a guardrail and stopped, and so did everybody else. Officers demanded that he get out of the car. He said no, threatening to shoot himself. Police finally got him in custody just before 5 p.m. The roads opened up sometime after 5 p.m. The suspect charged with being a felon in possession of a gun and felony evading. All right, a family is still searching for answers one year after a deadly Mother's Day massacre in Stockton. Three people, including a five-year-old girl, were shot and killed in their living room during a Mother's Day celebration. Over the last year, the family has been left in the dark, no answers. Leads have dried up, and police have no suspects, no theory. Zong Lor, sister of one of the victims and a mother herself, says Mother's Day will never be the same. I can never have that celebratory feeling because it almost feels guilty if I do feel um, like I'm celebrating myself or I'm celebrating Mother's Day. Police say it's still a very active case and they haven't made any arrests. Right now, there's a $30,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. The family is pleading to the community, hoping someone knows something. Here are some other stories that are making headlines for you right now. Trade war escalating. The president's top economic advisor says American consumers will soon feel the heat from an escalating trade war with China. This is trade talks breakdown between the two countries. China is pledging to retaliate after the U.S. raised tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods on Friday. California budget battle. Governor Newsom turned over his $213 billion budget yesterday. Now lawmakers have until June 15th to pass it. The proposal includes things like an end to the tax on diapers and tampons and spending more on kids and the poor. Refusing to testify again. Former Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning says she won't testify before a second grand jury looking into WikiLeaks. Manning already spent two months in jail for refusing to answer one grand jury's questions about the group's founder, Julian Assange. If she's found in contempt again, she could wind up back in jail. And that is your daily blend. If you have something you want to share with us, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10. And to get more stories like these, right into your inbox. Sign up for our Daily Blend newsletter. Text the word email to 916-321-3310 or just sign up at abc10.com slash email.